Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of NTPC Limited, hosted by IIFL Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hashwardhan Dole from IIFL Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Greetings, everyone. Uh, on behalf of IIFL Securities, I welcome you all for the third quarter earnings call of NTPC. To discuss the stellar performance uh, of the NTPC group, uh, we have uh, today the entire senior management team of NTPC, whom I'd like to congratulate, and also like to congratulate and appreciate uh, the board's uh, you know, token of paying out a handsome dividend. To discuss the numbers in detail and share the performance outlook, we have uh, Mr. A.K. Gautam, Director of Finance, Mr. Dilip Kumar Patel, Director of Human Resources, Mr. Ramesh Babu V, Director of Operation, Mr. Chandan Kumar Mondal, Director of Commercial, Mr. Ujwal Kanti Bhattacharya, Director of Projects. Without much of a delay, I'd like to hand over the line to NTPC Management, who will make the opening remarks subsequent to which the floor can be open for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ars. A very good evening to everybody. I, A.K. Gautam, Director of Finance, welcome all of you to the Q3 FY22 con call of NTPC Limited. I have with me Sri Dilip Kumar Patel, Director Human Resources, Sri Ramesh Babuvi, Director of Operations, Sri Chandan Kumar Mandal, Director of Commercial, and Sri Ujwal Kanti Bhattacharya, Director of Projects. I have also with me the other key members of NTPC team. Company has announced the unaudited financial results for the third quarter and nine months of FY22 today. The key performance highlights for the third quarter and nine months ended 31st December 21 have already been disclosed on both the stock exchanges. Now briefly upon operational highlights for Q3 and nine months of FY22. NTPC standalone gross generation in Q3 FY22 is 72.70 billion units and in nine months, FY22 is 219.26 billion units as compared to 65.42 billion units and 193.28 billion units in the corresponding previous periods, registering an increase of 11.13% and 13.44% respectively. Gross generation of NTPC group in Q3 FY22 is 87.92 billion units and in nine month FY22 is 264.70 billion units as compared to 76.53 billion units and 222.41 billion units in the corresponding previous period, registering an increase of 14.88% and 19.01% respectively. In Q3 FY22, we have added 1,327.42 megawatt to our commercial capacity, comprising 660 megawatt at BARD, 80 megawatt solar capacity at Jetsar, 49.92 megawatt solar capacity at Fatehgarh, 37.50 megawatt floating solar capacity at Ramagundam, 250 megawatt at Baroni, and 250 megawatt at Bharatiya Rail Bisley Company Limited. Also, after the expiry of validity of the PPA entered into with the erstwhile BSEB, the Board of Directors of NTPC has accorded approval for discontinuation of 
ऑपरेशंस ऑफ मुजफ्फरपुर थर्मल पावर स्टेशन स्टेज वन टू इन टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन मेगावाट ऑफ अवर होली ओन सब्सिडी कंपनी कांटी बिजली उत्पादन निगम लिमिटेड With this, the commercial capacity of NTPC has become 54,302.42 megawatt on standalone basis and 67,757.42 megawatt for the group as on 31st December 2021. NTPC group has already commissioned 1,557.42 megawatt of RE projects under EPC mode. 2,999.58 megawatt of solar projects, including ongoing projects of NTPC REL, are presently under implementation. In addition, 3,115 megawatt capacity has been won through tariff-based competitive bidding. For nine-month FY22, NTPC Korba station has ranked first with PL of 94.07% among the top 10 performing stations in the country in terms of PL of. During nine-month FY22, PL of of coal stations of NTPC was 68.95%, edge against the national average of 57.02%, thereby maintaining a spread of almost 12 percent. During the period, we have suffered losses due to grid restrictions and fuel supply. The generation loss due to grid restriction in coal-based stations was 53.52 billion units in nine-month FY22 as compared to 84.12 billion units in nine-month FY21. For the gas-based stations, the gross low, the loss was 22.75 billion units in nine months FY22 as compared to 20.25 billion units in nine months FY21. The generation loss on account of fuel supply constraint was 6.02 billion units for nine months FY22. Now regarding the status of fuel supply. During the nine-month FY22, materialization of coal against ACQ was 96.20% as against 88.71% in nine-month FY21. Coal supply during nine-month FY22 was 143.42 billion metric tons, comprising of 142.02 million metric tons of domestic coal and 1.40 million metric tons of imported coal. The coal supply during the corresponding previous period was 124.57 million metric ton with 123.96 million metric ton of domestic coal and 0.61 million metric ton of imported coal. NTPC has achieved a total coal production of 9.65 million metric ton during nine months FY22. Nine month FY21 was 7.12 million metric ton. <clears throat> Cumulatively, 42.03 million metric of ton of coal has been excavated from Pakhri Barwadi, Dolanga, Thalaipalli coal mines till 31st December 2021. <clears throat> Sorry. Cumulative expenditure of 7,527.16 crore has been incurred on the development of coal mines till 31st December 2021. Environmental Management Initiative for Preserving Environment. Flue gas desulfurization are under various stages of implementation for 64 gigawatt of group capacity. FGD systems have already been commissioned for 1,340 megawatt capacity. FGD systems package for 60.94 gigawatt capacity are under implementation and FGD system package for 1.45 gigawatt capacity are under various stage of tendering. Now, some update over the financial highlights. Gross sales for Q3 FY22 is 28,705.04 crore as against corresponding quarter of previous year gross sale of 24,471.07 crore, resisting an increase of 17.30 percent. 
On nine month basis, there is an increase of 14.28 percent in the gross sales. That is from 72,504.83 crore in nine month FY21 to 82,860.67 crore in nine month FY22. Total income for Q3 FY22 is 29,837.13 crore, as against corresponding quarter of previous year. Total income of 25,268.56 crore, registering an increase of 18.08 percent. On nine-month basis, there is an increase of 14.07 percent in the total income, that is from 75,312.89 crore in nine-month FY21 to 85,912.38 crore in nine-month FY22. Profit before tax for Q3 FY22 is 5,409.01 crore, as against 3,516 1.59 crore in the corresponding quarter of the previous year, registering an increase of 51.87 percent. On nine-month basis, PBT is 12,678.27 crore, as against 10,126.31 crore. In nine months FY21, registering an increase of 25.20 percent. Profit after tax for Q3 FY22 is 4,131.99 crore, as against 3,315.34 crore in the corresponding quarter of the previous year, registering an increase of 24.63 percent. On nine month basis, FAT is 10,489.53 crore. As against 9,290.30 crore in nine months FY21, registering an increase of 12.91 percent. Total income of group of for nine months FY22 is 97,269.89 crore, as against 83,859.59 crore in the corresponding period of the previous year, registering an increase of 16 percent. Profit after tax. Of the group for nine months, FY22 is 11,760.78 crore, as against 10,319.91 crore in the corresponding period of the previous year, registering an increase of 13.96 percent. The board has declared interim dividend at the rate of 40 percent of the paid-up share capital, that is rupees four per share. During the Q3 FY22. We have accounted dividend income of 628.39 crore from our subsidies and joint venture companies, as against rupees 5 crore received during the Q3 of FY21. An update on various other financial activities. The regulated equity, as on 31st December 21, was 70,452.69 crore. Now, some update about fund mobilisation. NTPC has issued unsecured debentures aggregating to 1,175 crore at a yearly coupon of 6.74 percent on 20th December 2021 for a period of 10 years, 3 months and 25 days. Average cost of borrowing for nine months FY22 is 5.95 percent as, as compared to 6.26 percent. In nine months FY21, during Q3 FY21, NTPC has signed term loan agreements of 3,000 crore and rupees 1,500 crore with HDFC Bank and Indusland Indusind Bank, respectively, totaling to 4,500 crores. Now, certain update about capex. In nine months FY22, we have incurred a group capex of. 24,000, 25,064.10 crore, as compared to 12,983.14 crore in the previous period. NTPC Limited has awarded project of standalone fuel cell-based microgrid with hydrogen production using electrolyzers at NTPC Simadri, that is in Andhra Pradesh. This will be India's first green hydrogen-based energy storage project. It would be precursor to large-scale hydrogen energy storage projects 
and would be useful for studying and developing multiple microgrids in various off-grid and strategic locations of the country. The hydrogen would be produced using the advanced 240 kilowatt solid oxide electrolyzer by taking input power from the nearby floating solar power project. This unique project configuration is designed in-house by NTPC. This unique project for India would open doors for decarbonizing the far-off regions of the country like Ladakh, Jammu Kashmir, etc. Either to dependent on diesel generators. The project is in line with the vision of Honorable Prime Minister for becoming carbon neutral by 2070 and making Ladakh a carbon neutral territory. NTPC and EDF France has signed an MOU to explore power sector related investment opportunities in Middle East, Europe, Africa and Asia. The MOU also envisages collaboration in the areas of R&D, efficiency improvement, consultancy, capacity building, hydrogen economy, electricity distribution apart from joint development of power generation projects including but not limited to solar, wind, hydro, and waste to energy projects. NTPC along with ISA signed grant agreement with Comros and Ethiopia for implementation of solarization projects as a PMC consultant of ISA. NTPC has been supporting 19 member countries of ISA under this solarization program for last one year under a partnership agreement with ISA. NTPC and Indian Oil signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate in the field of renewable energy and mutually explore opportunities for supply of low carbon RE, RTC, captive power. This is the first of its kind novel initiative by two leading national energy majors of India to support the country's commitment to achieve renewable energy targets and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. An MOU for cooperation in overseas power sector was signed between NTPC and Interraw Export LLC. MOU was signed for cooperation in taking up project development, capacity building and consultancy assignment outside India. NTPC Netra signed memorandum MOU with Greater Noida Industrial Development Authority for long-term supply of 20 tons per day refuse derived fuel from Greater Noida Authority to NTPC Netra. This initiative will help Netra to demonstrate an environment-friendly technology to produce green power and chemical from RDF. And it is planned under the theme of Netra Green Campus where the campus will have 24 by 7 green power from solar PV, battery storage, hydrogen, and RDF. Now I will briefly touch upon some of the NTPC group companies. The performance of our JV and subsidies is exemplary in nine month FY22. Our subsidies have earned a profit of 1,788.04 crore in nine months FY22 as compared to 1,042.54 crore in the corresponding period of the previous year, resisting an increase of 71.5051%. The share of NTPC in JV profit has increased by 73.66% from 480.50 crore in nine month FY21 to 834.44 crore in nine month FY22. Can we win our trading subsidy transacted 17.92 billion units during the nine month FY22 as against 12.70 billion units during nine month FY21, resisting a growth of over 40%, 41%. In an endeavor towards sustainable development, NTPC Vidyut Vapar Nigam Limited, a wholly owned subsidy of NTPC Limited, has signed an agreement with Varanasi Nagar Nigam for setting up a waste to energy plant. The plant shall help in mitigating environmental hazards caused by solid waste and bring clean surroundings, 
contributing towards swachh bharat the plant shall be a milestone for the holy city of varanasi towards atmanirbhar bharat using the latest indigenous make in india technology for solid waste management in the country varanasi nagar nigam has allocated about 20 acres of land for setting up the plant nvvn has signed a similar agreement with gopal municipal corporation also ntpc continues to win laurels and awards in various fields major awards received in q3 fy22 are as follows ntpc has received esg india leadership award 2021 for playing a key role in air pollution management the award was presented for excellent practices for reducing the monitoring air pollutant emissions ntpc has been conferred prestigious shrm special recognition for learning and development for the year 2021 ntpc has been honored with seventh csr impact award in the wash water sanitation and hygiene large category for the project revival of municipal solid waste plant karsada at the india csr summit ntpc received company with best csr practice award in 8th asia business responsibility summit organized by asian center for corporate governance and sustainability these were some of the highlights i wanted to share before we begin with the question and answer session thank you magrin can you open the floor for q and a thank you very much yes We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from the AM Capital. Go ahead. Good evening, sir, and congratulations on very good set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, on the adjustable profit. is it possible to share the adjusted profit for the quarter and in most accounts 3b you mentioned 6.7 billion as prior period is there any amount which is uh, for, which is also recognized in the fuel yeah regarding adjusted profit you can contact aditya dar he will be submitting separately and regarding uh you were asking about note number 3b 3b out of 6.7 uh, billion of uh, yeah it commission recognized it, it, it also part? includes the it also includes the previous year fuel of 61.81 crore in q3 fy22 understood sir my second question is uh, uh, i understand that you have roughly around 7.4 bill, uh, gigawatt of renewables portfolio uh which includes under operation under implementation and the and the amount which have won in the bids uh but how much expect to commission over the next three years based on the contractual commitments at this point of time is it possible to share that number over next three years sure uh i will uh, request uh, mohit to answer this question please mohit uh Yeah, next three years uh, contractually there is practically no commitment because generally the lead time is about 18 to 24 months only. But over the next two years, the board target is to do over uh, uh, close to about three and a half gigawatts. And beyond that, once we get the LOAs, we'll start working on that also. Understood. So, lastly, sir, is there any proposal to transfer the standalone renewables portfolio to NTPC Renewables Limited? Yeah, today we made a disclosure in the board. We have decided that we will be creating a so SPV under which the certain identified solar assets will be transferred, through which a monetization. We are planning to do some monetization. 
Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepika Mundra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir, and uh, thank you for taking my question. So I just wanted, uh, uh, you know, over the next two, three year period, uh, guidance on uh, CapEx uh, and how much of that is likely to go towards uh, renewables. Um, also, you mentioned certain, uh, you know, projects in green hydrogen and battery storage. Uh, is, is, are those CapEx commitments that will be going in from NTPC? Yeah. I am director of project may be answering this question. See, this year we have a capex target of 23736 uh, crore, and uh, we are more than 90 percent already. And we are sure to achieve this. Maybe we will try to go a bit more. Next year our target is 22,500 uh, crore. And out of which uh, the proportion of uh, renewable will be of the order of 40 percent. This is the position today. Second portion regarding RE. Regarding hydrogen and battery. Yeah. So uh, regarding hydrogen, I think one of the points was mentioned earlier that we already started work on a hydrogen-based microgrid. Uh, we also intend to take up a couple of other pilot projects relating to hydrogen, green hydrogen-based mobility, and then also for green hydrogen blending. Other than that, we have already issued a tender for procurement of 3,000 megawatt hour of storage capacity, which we intend to use mainly for uh, entering into contracts for supplying round-the-clock power to uh, the customer. And we also intend to come out separately with uh, capex-based uh, battery uh, solutions. Also. Understood. And uh, sir, can you talk a little bit about the procurement strategy for these kind of projects for battery as well as for uh, electrolyzers for the green hydrogen project? Well, you see, as a, as a government-owned company, all our procurement has to be through a transparent bidding process only. But what we intend to do in the case, in the case on the electrolyzer side is that we intend to come out with a medium-term Partnership basis the lowest price offered by the manufacturer, so that's on the angle. And on the battery side, like I said, we already come out with 3,000 megawatt, megawatt hour bid, which will be used. And once we are able to tie that up, we'll be coming out with larger capacities also. Right, sir. Thank you. If you can just give a capex number for these projects, it will be helpful. These will be tied up once we have the numbers on the table. Once we have the final price for that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Apurva Bahadur from Indus Tech. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, you. any updates on the uh, renewable business IPO or possible monetization now that we are planning to uh, add the standalone renewable assets as well? So timelines on that. Yeah, yeah, as already told that uh, identified renewable assets will be transferred to a SPV or a separate subsidy company for which we will be uh, seeking an exemption from the government of India regarding exemption from the capital gain tax. And as soon as that uh, exemption is available, we will be doing, most probably, this will be done in the next financial year, say by October 22. Okay, uh, very useful, sir. So secondly, uh, on, on this storage tender which, which, uh, for which we have come out with recently, uh, so can you throw some light on the economics there? So will we be doing like a back-to-back -back agreement? Um, or will it be more like we will be tying up that capacity and as and when the opportunity comes up for RTC power, we will be bidding based on that. Uh, also, the renewable capacity which will be used to charge this storage, uh, will, will this be uh, separate from our existing pipeline or do we intend to use the curtailed electricity from our existing project? Okay, I think part of that will answer yourself because this tender for battery will be used largely for back-to-back -back orders only. Obviously, we cannot be sitting on this capacity. So once we have this capacity in place, 
people who are ready to operate, then we will be placing orders for them. Uh, secondly, the charging power, and these are all expected to be RE based storage solutions only. So, all that RE capacity is not yet included in the pipeline and would be taken up once we enter into firm contracts or optics. Okay. Uh, so, we, we had also come out with a domestic module EOI. Uh, so, want, wanted to check what sort of interest have we received uh, given that there is probably going to be a module shortage. Uh, since the uh, the government will be imposing BCD on Chinese modules and domestic capacity is not yet there. So we have received interest from practically all the module manufacturers, including the guys who have uh, supplied for the PLI scheme, practically all of them. And we intend to come out with a firm RFP maybe by the end of March. Okay. So last, last question from my side, if I may, uh, and this is on the thermal capacity addition. So, so any new projects have been added to the pipeline? I think there were discussions on Talcher. Yeah, yeah, I think Ujwal sector project will be giving this answer. As we told earlier also, and we are consistent to that, we are going for higher of renewable capacity addition in our portfolio and reducing our dependence on coal per se and fossil fuel in general. But we are also going through a transition process. You know that uh, Government of India has declared 2070 as the net zero. So we in consensus with Ministry of Power are now uh, on the drawing board and creating a, a new paradigm. Some capacity on the thermal are going to be added. And we have already advertised an NIT for a 1320 megawatt of coal based power project at Talche and you must have seen it in the newspaper already. So the process of Talcher expansion by 1320 megawatt based on coal is on. Okay. Um, yes, please. Uh, right, so fine. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'll get back in the queue for more questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants, we would request you to please limit your question to two at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Subhadeep Mitra from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, so my question is largely with regard to uh, the CAPEX that you're looking at. So while I think you gave us the FY22 and the 23 numbers, any clarity on, you know, what the FY24 CAPEX number will look like and, you know, how that gets bifurcated between uh, uh, thermal as well as renewables? Yeah. Uh, that FY22 are uh, being built up now. What we have frozen so far is 18921, and we'll definitely add much more. As I told, the current year is 23736. Next year, we have already farmed up 22454, and uh, for the FY24, as I told, 18291 has been farmed up, and we'll be adding much more there. We'll come back to you as we. Yes. Sir, so within this 18291, uh, how much would be the renewable part? I told uh, that uh, for the next financial year, uh, approximately 40% of the renewable and going progressively forward, the renewable will be more. But since we have started adding some of the thermal capacities, I think in FY24 also the proportion of renewable will remain around 40 to 45. Then it will go up progressively very high. Understood. Uh, lastly, if you can also help us with the uh, plant-wise capacity additions that you're looking at in FI 23 and 24. Okay. For FI 23, that uh, North Karanpura, Unit 1, 660 megawatt. Then Bar, Unit 2, 660 megawatt. Telangana, one unit of 800 megawatt, unit number 1. And then Telangana unit number 2 also of 800 megawatt. Then Durgapur, there's a small unit of 40 megawatt. 
Bangladesh is going to be completed both unit 1 and 2, 1320 megawatt. And uh, solar 1207, and we'll be adding probably more. We're on the working on that. And uh, this is a standalone. If you look at the group, then THTC hydro pump storage at Perry, 4 into 250 megawatt will come, 1000 megawatt. And through NREL, we will be adding probably another 822, 1200 megawatt more. So if I conclude it, the NTVC group, the capacity will be something between 7300 to 8000 megawatt. And for this FY24, the total capacity on the board is 4034. And as I told that we are going to go add more and more renewable. So we'll add some more renewable capacity. As of now, it is 4034, predominantly thermal. Bar unit one, uh, sorry, bar stage one unit number three, 660. North Karanpura unit number two, 660 megawatt. North Karanpura unit number three, 660 megawatt. Patra two in the Jharkhand state near Rachi, 800 megawatt, first unit. Then on the THTC thermal, which is near Kurja, first unit of 660 megawatt, and THTC hydro project at Vishnugar Pipu 444 megawatt. Through NREL, we are planning 150, but definitely this 150 is have a capacity to become, uh, in my opinion, no less than 3,000 by that time. So on the drawing board as on date, it is 4034 roughly, but likely to go around 6,000 with our Thank you so much. Sorry. Sorry, sir, you were saying something. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I told that uh, beyond this, we are not projecting uh, because we are reworking on the thing. And regarding thermal, I was just answering the question of somebody uh, a couple of minutes ago. And uh, as we are going increasingly into renewables, but uh, considering the transition and the transition fuel requirement, we are uh, going for addition of some thermal power station. Tanchi, we have started. We are also looking at, at uh, some other power projects like Kendrawali, Lara, Dandipandi, etc. Amounting to 5,320 megawatt. But one thing I will uh, like to share with all of you, our uh, beloved investors, that uh, consistent with our approach of uh, reaching the decarbonization process and net zero, ultimately by 2070, these thermal capacities will not be business as usual. We will be going for what we are terming as blue coal technology, but the carbon footprint we are trying to bring down as uh, progressively lower, and possibly if we can, up to the level of CCGT. But that's a tall talk. Let's, do, uh, let's see what we can do. Thank you. Uh, and these incremental thermal additions will all be on the ROE based mechanism? The incremental thermal capacity will be all based on? Yes. ROE. Yes, yes. ROE. For sure, ROE. Yeah. Through okay. PPA. Understood. Uh, one last question, if I may sneak in. Uh, so, while I think there was an earlier question on your divestment of the solar assets, just wanted to get some clarity. I think there has been uh, you know, a lot of news flow around the fact that you're looking at. Uh, probably a strategic uh, partner or a strategic state sale happening at the renewable subsidiary level. So just wanted to understand that this uh, exemption on capital gains for sale of certain solar assets that you mentioned, this would be separate from the strategic partner that you're looking at for the overall solar subsidiary? No, no, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, we will be transferring certain identified solar assets to the new subsidiary or a new SPV through which we will be doing this monetization either through IPO, regular IPO or through some strategic partner. But these transfers will be made only after we receive uh, exemption regarding the capital gain tax from the Ministry of Finance. Understood. Very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Can you also talk a bit about what is the plan for the FGD completion? When can we expect all these FGDs to be commissioned, at least the ones which have been tendered out? See, FGD, you, as you are uh, probably aware, that we have already started working on 62280 megawatt of FGD all across uh, the country, out of which 1340 yes. have already been completed, right? Right. That spans five units. Another 129 units we are working. The Dadri uh, unit five and unit six will be commissioned uh, by June. Dadri unit five is already uh, commissioned, so to say, and we'll declare it in another seven days time. Jhajjar, which is at the uh, the one unit will be ready by, uh, you can say, February commission, and then progressively four months afterwards, second and third unit. These are the things which are commissioned, uh, which are going to be commissioned in this financial year itself. And then we are also expecting that Kharbon 660 megawatt in this financial year 21-22, uh, and Uchahar 500 megawatt in this financial year itself. Then Tanda 220 megawatt, and uh, that takes us to total of 2670 megawatt. I think that can I should I yeah. give in totality the numbers? Yeah, yeah I think that's because it's 2370. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the total is 62,280 megawatt, of which yeah. 1,340 has been completed. 22, 23, FY, we will be completing around 22,790 megawatt. 23, 24, we have a target of 15,270 megawatt. And balance, okay. 22,880 megawatt, we will be completing in 24, 25. Thank you. This is really Thank you, sir. And can you also talk a bit about uh, what kind of uh, EBITDA are you expecting from your renewable assets? Uh, getting into 23 or FI 24? What kind of? Uh, it, uh, it is very immature to say. Yeah, but we are expecting uh, return on equity, what we are expecting in case of our thermal power projects. Because uh, normally the thermal power projects, they take a minimum gestation period of six to seven years. Here, in case of uh, renewable energy projects, it is, uh, say, 12 to 18 months. So right. corresponding, we are considering the corresponding ROI in case of uh, renewable energy projects. On IRR basis. Yeah. Okay. So, so IRR of 13% odd is something that you would be looking at since you get 15.5% ROI. 12%. Not 13%, 12%, you can say. 11 to 12%. 12. Equity IRR. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is very useful. My last question is, you know, while you've been doing a lot of work on solar, there is also talk on storage. So far, what I know is there is only a 50 megawatt wind. Uh, am I missing something or is, are you deliberately not doing wind? Or is there any hurdle in doing wind? No, can you come again? What was the question? Not clear. Yeah. Your yeah. Voice. yeah. So to, to my knowledge, there is only 50 megawatt of wind in your portfolio so far. Uh, have I got it wrong, or uh, is is this correct? And you are deliberately trying to avoid wind, or is there a reason to avoid doing this? No, no, that number is correct, but we are not avoiding that. We already started work on another 150 megawatt, and we intend to take up wind in a major way. So there is no deliberate avoidance of any kind. Okay, okay. and and I would presume hybrids would follow post that as well. Yeah, so for your information, we have already won a 450 megawatt hybrid tender uh, about yeah. four months ago, which was done by Seki. So we are well into that, and we are also participating now in new hybrid and wind tender also. That's very good. Thank you so much. That's all for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anuj Upadhyay from HD. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on good set of numbers, sir. The two questions. One is uh, the reason for low availability during the quarter, and uh, was there any under recovery 
uh, for the quarter and the nine month. Uh, if you can provide, it would be very helpful, sir. And secondly, I missed on the figure of NTPC share across the JV and subsidiary for Q, uh, 3Q and nine month. If you can share those, it would be helpful, sir. So, uh, regarding first question, uh, our director of operation, Mr. Ramesh Babu, will be answering this question. The, the, the low availability was because we had taken the planned outages of our units uh, compared to last year. It was 4.4% was a planned outage. This year we took around 7.67%. So due to COVID, whichever the units that we could not take for outage, all these units have been taken. Uh, in the last year, in the first nine months, we did only 26 overallings. This year we have done already 35, another five overalls in, are in, uh, in uh, progress. So that was the reason why there was a uh, availability loss. But nevertheless, it's more than the required 85%. Uh, regarding the under recovery, there has been around 650 crores is the under recovery as of now. And uh, by the end of the year, it would uh, come down to around 350 crores. Uh, as of now, already it, has, it is less than the 50 crores, now it's only 590 as of today. So by end of the year, it will be around 350 crores. In this also, another around 70 crores, we will be approaching the CRC, because uh, during three of our units have actually, we had to take overall for a longer time due to COVID. So this, uh, uh, this will be approaching CRC for relaxation. So it could be around 350 crores would be by the end of the year. End of the year. Uh, just to confirm, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Just to confirm, you mentioned nine month under recovery was in the range of six fifty crores. Am I right, sir? Six. Yes, yes. Okay. And target is to bring it down to three fifty. As it as it as it move along, the another three months is there. See, the DC would increase, and uh, slowly we'll be reducing the under recovery. Okay. And for the quarter, sir, if you can quantify Q3. But this under recovery we generally consider in the in the, in the cumulative basis only. Under recovery is always considered on the cumulative basis. Oh, fair point, sir. Yeah, on okay, the two hundred eighteen crores. Two one eight or two eight zero. Yeah. Yeah. Two one eight. Thank you, sir. And on the uh, JV share, sir. Yeah, yeah. With respect to your second part, with uh, this subsidies, they have contributed 1,788.05 crores in nine-month period, and quarter it is 814.52, and joint ventures 834.44 crores and 307.99 crores. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. First of all, congratulate on the book of numbers. Uh, so my first question is on a follow-up of the previous question. You mentioned about the uh, capacities uh, that are likely to come up uh, in FI23 and 24. Um, so my question is on the CWIT amount, uh, equivalent amount that will be transferred from CWIT to Draws lock on FA 23 to 24. Yeah. Yeah. We just can't mention right now, but you can you can estimate based on the uh, this uh, uh, which has been mentioned by director project regarding commissioning target. Multiply by you, you can identify how much uh, CWIP will be converted into fixed assets. But right now it is it will be difficult to tell. So our measurement can we think about a ballpark of you can, uh, you can the, consider roughly multiply it by around four five five, five crores around five crores per megawatt. Right. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And so, what is our receivables amount this uh, at the end of quarter three? Receivables, trade receivables. Trade receivables will be well within the 45 days. Right, right, right. Now, if you see our outstanding dues beyond due date is only uh, approximately 4,500 crores, and more or less we will. I think uh, by 31st March also it will remain like that only, and total outstanding will be within the 45 days uh, limit. 
<laughs> and the last question on the capacity addition uh, on 33 and 24, how much could be brownfield and how much could be greenfield uh, on the thermal side? I think it will be all brownfield only. It will be all brownfield. We, we have stopped going for greenfield projects. Whatever expansion will go for, these are all will be brownfield. And where we don't need to go for fresh land acquisition, we have water availability and we have also grid connectivity available. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll jump back now. Thank you. We would request participants to limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Sir, uh, what will be the regulatory, uh, regulatory equity at uh, the end of third quarter? It is 70,453 crores. Okay, 70,430 70, crores in the standard entity. And sir, you uh, mentioned about... Seven. 70453. Okay, 70453. Okay, sir. And yeah. so, uh, what was the total amount of uh, dividends received from subsidiaries and JVs in the quarter? 600 or crore, right? I mean, I did not get that number correctly. Can you please repeat that? It is 70453. Oh, oh, it is 631 crores. And what was and what was it last year in the same quarter? Last year was only seven crores. Okay, so sir, I mean, if I exclude the dividend from the other income of both the last year and this year, it looks like other income has come off quite meaningfully year on year. So, what will be the reason for that? There is a reduction in surcharge amount. Okay. Okay. And and so broadly speaking, I mean, if I kind of reduce the prior period sales of 600 odd crore and the dividend from subsidies of 600 odd crore, uh, it looks like that the recurring pad has declined year on year. Is that a right understanding, or is there some other one-off item which I'm missing here? No, it is. It has not declined. Uh, this, I think you are uh, go, going towards the adjusted pack numbers. I think Aditya would be giving you separate. Okay. Okay. We'll wait for that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Modi from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, and uh, big congratulations for, for a great set of numbers. So just a couple of questions uh, I had. So, uh, so where are we in the process of, uh, uh, you know, uh, moving Nabinagar and Kanti into the standalone entity? We were uh, looking to do that. Uh, when do we expect to uh, conclude that? Actually, that issue is pending in the MCA. We are... We were thinking that this process will be completed by 31st March, but probably this will go up to June. Okay. Uh, so my second question is, uh, sir, in the one and you know the older tender also in the renewable space. Uh, uh, obviously, there have been a significant incre increase in the module prices. So are we uh, facing any delays or cost overruns uh, on that account, or uh, we are fairly confident that uh, the delivery will be met on schedule and on the contracted price? No, there are definitely delays, because not only because of the increase in module prices, but also on account of COVID and all. But we don't expect any price increase, because mostly these are uh, fixed price contracts. And if there is any change, that is mainly on account of change in power. Right. And uh, so, so the CPSU tender, what is the progress there, the 2 gigawatt that we had won? On the CPSU tender for 2 gigawatts, we, uh, we've already signed uh, the power purchase agreement for 1,000 megawatts. And uh, we hope to start work on that at the end of March, hopefully. 
and for balance capacity also we hope to start work in another six months or so. Right. So, uh, so in the uh, so in this we are uh, in this two gigawatt we will have to procure modules locally uh, uh, from uh, this is under DCR. Yes, this is under DCR. So the cells and modules have to be procured from domestic. Uh, okay. Which and is why which is why the time yeah. given. Yeah. Yeah, which is why the time given is also slightly longer by the government under this. Right. Noted. And sir, what are the tenders uh, which you are expected to see in the market? Uh, uh, any quantification on that uh, in the both uh, in renewable overall uh, over the next 12 months? I am not very clear what you want to know. You want the tenders which we plan to issue or the tenders which are expecting? Quantum of tenders which you are expecting. Quantum of tenders which you are expecting. To will you will you will be participating in the bid? So that, that's a very rough number. Seki says it, they might be coming out with tenders of close to 10 gigawatts in the next six months. So that's okay. all based on information not available within it. So sure. thank you and all the best. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is, uh, what is the total commercial capacity uh, uh, which has completed 25-year PPA period uh, currently? And how much of this uh, capacity has uh, seen an extension of PPA? Uh, and also, if you could clarify, what is the current status uh, on the Dadri PPA with the uh, 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 BFPS and uh, uh, Tata, uh, given the news flow that we are seeing in media. Uh, uh, on the, the total, by, by March 22, I think around 14,000 uh, megawatt will complete 25 years. What is the second question? So, update about of, Dadri regarding. And uh, for 14, the 14 gigawatt, has the PPA been extended and for what duration? No, PPA, PPA is already there. On our PPA, this 14 gigawatt, as far as we are concerned, it is only a perpetual PPA. So there is no exit clause from this PPA. It is only that government has come out with a guideline. By virtue of that guideline, uh, DISCOM can uh, exit from the PPA by if they are following that guideline. Otherwise, there is no clause in the PPA to exit after 25 years. Sure. On the Dadri? Uh, yeah, Dadri, on Dadri, yeah, just Dadri, I think uh, uh, this uh, Delhi Discom, they approached CRC, and CRC has given order that uh, they can exit, subject to that government deallocate their power, because as far as we are concerned, this government under their sovereign power, they are allocating this power. Our PPA does not talk about any megawatt. It is only a mega, this allocation is done by government of India. So they have challenged, one of the discom they challenged it uh, in uh, April. So that hearing is complete. So order is expected any, any time. And another discom went to Delhi High Court for redressal of this issue that was rejected by Delhi High Court. So again, that uh, discom has also landed up in after. Okay. So you mentioned that uh, for Muzaffar Nagar, uh, you know, a couple of 110 megawatt units the board has approved uh, uh, for shutdown. In the next five years, uh, uh, you know, what uh, is expected for shutdown? Uh, as far as thermal units are concerned, because of obsolescence? We have uh, in Tanda uh, four units, 110 megawatt, and uh, in Barawani two units, 110 megawatt. So these are the only units which we will be considering for shutdown, but other 210 megawatt, megawatt units will be uh, uh, running them, which is required with proper r &M. Okay. Uh, finally, what was the late payment surcharge for Q3 and the nine-month period? Yeah, 
for the net 9 month period it is 1695 crores in the april to december 20 and corresponding current period it is 593 crores if you go through the quarter october to december 20 is 565 crores and october to december 21 it is 173 crores okay finally one bookkeeping question uh, what is the addition to regulated equity based from the commissioned captive coal mine so is there any uh, regulated income that you are earning uh, you know on the uh, uh, say pasli barwadi where the uh, project is commissioned for some time now yeah yeah we are earning but uh, i think ready uh, right now readily this figure is not available with me you can obtain this from mr aditya sir this letter is allowed 14% on yeah yeah 14 percent are thank you and wish you all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to mr harshvardhan dole for closing comments thank you magri i sincerely like to thank ntpc management for uh, you know explaining the results in detail and taking the q and a Uh, i also like to thank uh, the management for uh, giving us an opportunity to host the call and uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for uh, you know attending the call uh, so any last comments that you would like to make no no thank you very much harsh and uh, so you people should be very happy that this time we have announced a very good dividend and uh, NTPC, I can only say that we will continue to perform better. Yeah, we are on a growth path and we are showing results. Yeah, so market should cheer up. Thank you. On behalf of IIFL Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.